I'm coming to you today from Drake's Beach at the Point Reyes National Seashore. I came to make a video about something you may have seen if you paid careful attention to my last video about the EM1X, and it is the lens that's attached to the camera. I bought it at the same time I bought the camera. It is the Olympus 100 to 400 millimeter f5 to f6.3 telephoto zoom lens. I bought the two as a package because they fit together really well. They balance really well. The weight isn't too crazy. And the two of them together are going to let me do the kinds of photography that I've been wanting to do more of, specifically wildlife and those compressed telephoto landscapes. So today I just wanna make a quick video about what I like, what I don't like, how this package works together. And I came here because I wanna use this to try to find some elephant seals. Hopefully I can get close to one and see what this thing can do. So stay tuned. So let's start with the key points. It's a 100 to 400 millimeter zoom, which means in micro four thirds terms, that is a 200 to 800 millimeter effective focal length in a package that's this easy to one hand. That's pretty cool. That's why I love Micro Four Thirds, is how compact it is compared to something similar you would get on full frame. The aperture is f5 at the 100 millimeter lens end to f6.3 at the telephoto end, and that is pretty dark, and that is the main thing people complain about with this lens, is how dark it is at full zoom. And I've experienced that a little bit already with this lens, shooting early morning, shooting in the evening, shooting when it's overcast, zoomed all the way in at f6.3. It's hard to get a fast enough shutter speed to really freeze motion if you wanna keep your ISO down where you're gonna get clean images. If I wanna keep my ISO in the 200 or 400 range and get a, a shutter speed between an 800th of a second and a thousandth of a second, it gets pretty tough if there's not enough ambient light. That's the biggest thing this lens struggles with. With video, it's not that big of a deal because you're shooting at a much slower shutter speed, but for, for stills, I can see it being a challenge. Well, I apologize for the harsh light. I came here looking for an elephant seal, and I found one. I found one, all alone on the beach, sleeping by himself. Seems to be having a nice time. Um, tourists are keeping their distance, and I'm just sitting here uh, getting some shots of them. I'm about 100 feet away, between 240, 250 millimeters of zoom, gets him to fill the frame nicely. And I'm just shooting some stills, shooting some video, uh, trying to get some video of him uh, flicking sand on his back, because that's kind of cute. Let's run down the list of some of the other specifications of the lens. It has a 72 millimeter filter diameter. It has a removable tripod collar, and this is really cool. The tripod collar has built in grooves that are Arca Swiss compatible. That is really, really cool. With almost every other tripod collar, you have to buy an adapter plate for the bottom. If you wanna use it with Arca compatible clamps, which everybody does, so, Everybody else, start doing what Olympus does. Olympus, update your older lenses, like the 40 to 150, with this type of collar, please. This is the most awesome feature. Has a, comes with a removable lens hood. It's plastic, nothing special about it. Uh, my one gripe on the lens hood is it doesn't have that cool little door that some of the Canon and Nikon and other lenses have where you can flip that door open and stick your finger in there to adjust a circular polarizer or a variable ND filter. That would be really cool. I may end up drilling a hole in this one. I'll keep you posted if I end up doing that and how well it works. This lens has built-in image stabilization. So in, this, in addition to the IBIS you have in the camera body, you also have image stabilization built into the lens. But this is not one of Olympus's pro lenses. The pro lenses have what Olympus calls Sync IS. So your 12 to 100 and your 300 Pro and your 150 to 400 Pro, 
with those lenses, the stabilizer talks to the body and the two stabilizers work together. With this, they don't. Basically, the lens fixes some motion and the camera body fixes other motion. So Olympus says you get three effective stops of image stabilization with the, uh, the combined IBIS and non-sync IS, which is still pretty good. If you're shooting off of something stable, off of a tripod, off of a monopod, off of a sandbag, it works really, really, really well. The only time it struggles is if you try to pan, if, you, if, you're, if you're not too steady holding the camera, you'll see where it'll get really stable and then it'll jerk to the side and get really stable and then it'll jerk to the side and get really stable. So it looks like the two stabilizing systems are fighting each other sometimes when you move the camera. But once you settle down, it all locks nice and tight and, and it works pretty well. So it's one of those things you just have to get used to it. This lens is also IPX1 weather sealed, just like the M1X body. So the two together can survive. Uh, I think the IPX1 means they can survive having water dripped on it for 10 minutes or something like that. I know they can survive a lot more than that. I've shot with lesser Olympus bodies and lesser Olympus lenses in just torrential rain. So I really love their, uh, their weather sealing. So I have no doubts that this combo will serve me very well in the fog, the mist, the rain. Uh, anything I'm gonna throw at it. The zoom ring has some of the most aggressive texturing I've seen on a camera lens. It's, it's, it's metal, it's machined, it's sharp. So even if it's wet, even if your hands are cold, even if you're slippery, if you're covered in mud, you're still gonna be able to get a good grip on this lens and zoom it in and zoom it out. It also has a really nice manual focus ring. So you can, mat you can, you can put the camera in manual focus and it works really, really well. Um, since this camera doesn't do slow motion with autofocus, you need a good manual focus if you wanna be able to track things that are moving. So I'm gonna to have to get a lot of practice with that, but the, the manual focus feels really intuitive. Even though it is fly-by-wire, there's no mechanical gearing in there. It's all electronically sending that information to the lens, but it works and it works really well. You probably can't see them because of this wide lens I'm using. They're right here behind me. I'm walking into the sun. I've been walking into the sun so that I could have good light for talking to all of you, but now I've got to walk past this group of seals and shoot back this way so that I have light illuminating them. So I have to walk between the seals and the water, timing it so that the waves don't get me wet. The nice thing about this lens, this 800 millimeter equivalent lens, is it lets me get nice, tight close-ups of these animals without getting so close that I disturb them. These animals are protected, so you're supposed to stay a minimum of 50 feet away. Better if you can stay 100 feet away. I can stay 100 feet away and zoom in at 800 effective millimeters and fill the frame with these animals. So I really like this lens for shooting uh, skittish animals or animals that are protected and you need to keep your distance. Basically, if you get close enough for the animals to notice you, you're too close. I've been talking a lot about how I love the camera and how I love the lens, but the real MVP of today's trip has been this little Benro tripod. I've basically been using it as a monopod or collapsing it down low and using it as a tripod. And it's actually surprisingly stable considering how skinny it is. At full extension, it's not the best, but I really was expecting a lot less from it. I was expecting it to literally crumple under the weight of this lens. And I'm, and I'm leaning on it like a monopod to, uh, to steady the shots. 
it's really been doing great. And uh, the nice thing is I don't need to carry a heavy tripod and I don't need to spend another couple of hundred dollars on a more expensive carbon fiber tripod that's more sturdy. Eventually I will, but I can put that purchase off a little while longer than I thought. So kudos to you, Benro. Um, my next tripod will probably be another Benro because this thing is blowing me away. All right, I'm gonna set you down here and do some shooting. This is awesome. There are at least a dozen right here. So cute. Well, it's been a fun day, but now it's time to head back. I saw all the seals I could hope to see today. It's been a really productive day. I had a lot of fun with the lens, learned a few things, really found out what it can do. It really lets me punch in close and get good intimate shots of these animals while still maintaining a respectful distance. So this is a big success. I'm glad I got here at this time because in four days, this beach is going to close to the public in order to give the seals enough time to mate and to breed and to raise their pups. So this was the perfect time of year to come as the seals were hauling out, but before the, bridge, the place closed to people. So with that, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna head back to the car and I'm gonna drive home. Thank you all for uh, joining me and stay tuned for the next one coming soon.